In a market where ergonomic office products are becoming more and more popular, it can be hard to know which products are worth your money. If you're like me and work full-time in front of the computer, you already know how it can badly affect your physical health. Same rule can apply if you're a hardcore gamer. Having a properly adjusted ergonomic chair is a good starting point, and a properly adjusted monitor can help as well, whether you use a monitor arm or some sort of riser. But what about standing desks? Studies have shown the health benefits of standing up for short periods as it releases a good part of the tensions that form in your back. In the long run, it can also help to improve your posture by reinforcing your core. But what's it like in real life? Well, I've had the chance to try Prime Cable's dual motor sit-stand desk frame and we'll take a look at it today. This sit-stand desk frame is available through Prime Cable's website only as the time of filming, and I'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out. They only ship to Canada as of now, but I will update the info if it changes over time. It costs $330 Canadian right now, which converts to about $255 US. So that's quite cheap for a motorized sit-stand desk, but don't let the price fool you. That thing is quite impressive. It came in a large box. Here's my cat for a size reference. As you can see, he was really excited about it. It's also quite heavy at over 50 pounds, so you might need a friend to carry it around. So we'll unbox these legs now, and you'll need to move away, fluffy boy. As you can see, everything is nicely packed in there with plenty of open cell foam. All the parts were safely packaged, and none of them were damaged, even though the box seemed to have been handled a bit roughly. Fortunately, my package inspector confirmed that everything was in order. So here are all the parts that were in the box. As you can see, I got the desk in white, but it's also available in black. Again, my package inspector confirmed that no parts were missing. There was the legs, the parts needed to mount the tabletop, the mounting hardware, and the electronic components. Also, the included assembly instructions are easy to follow. So I started by assembling the parts where the tabletop will be installed together. Then I added the included rubber pads to protect the surface from the steel frame. It also prevents it from gliding when you're screwing it. After that, I turned the top part upside down and I installed one of the legs. The motors are located in the legs, so there are no extra installation steps for these. I then proceeded with the other leg. I installed the feet, again going one leg after the other, using four screws each time. I then installed the PSU mounting bracket, that's meant to hold the power supply up top, and I then plugged in both motors. I assembled the cable management rack so that it could be attached to the frame. And then I installed it on the frame and I adjusted the width of the legs so that they fit my tabletop. It's 61 inches wide and these legs can fit any tabletop between 43 and 87 inches, so I'm good. For my tabletop, I used the one I had on my previous desk, which I stained myself. I made a video about it and there should be a card on screen right now if you're interested. I also didn't want to redo all my cable management, so I tried to leave my IKEA Signum rack installed while transferring the tabletop. Quite a dangerous operation though, I wouldn't recommend you to do it that way. I secured my top with the included screws, and I installed the control panel at the far right using two screws. So I reinstalled all my gear on top like it was before, starting with my monitor and its arm alongside my PC. Then it was the lamps and my speakers, my subwoofer and audio interface. I reinstalled my LED strip and started replugging all my gear. My cable management inspector came by and was disappointed, so I had to work on it a bit more. Again, I recently made a video about cable management for standing desks, and there will be a card on screen right now if you want to check it out. I cover most of the key elements that make a clean setup, even with sit-stand legs. It wasn't perfect yet, but it was good enough, so here's how it looked when I was done. Keep in mind, reinstalling my gear and cable managing my desk took about one hour in real life. So now, how does it work? The control panel only features touch buttons. 
and they're backlit. It also turns off when not in use after a few minutes and you need to hold the M button for a few seconds to unlock it. That's a great feature if you have young children at home, but personally, I wouldn't need it. Then you can manually adjust the height using the arrow buttons, and you can also store tree height presets, which is a useful feature if you want to make sure that you go back to your height all height position after standing. And you can set these with the M button. There's also a display that lets you know your current height, and finally, the T button lets you set a timer so that you don't forget to stand up at regular intervals. If there is one issue to mention though, it would be that the controller seems to unsync itself from the legs at times. Sometimes it will stop incrementing as the desk goes up and reset itself after that to show you the current height. But in some cases, the legs won't go up exactly to the wanted preset. Clicking again on the preset button fixes the height, but it's still worth noting. It's not a big problem, but it can be annoying for someone who uses it often. However, it doesn't seem to happen when the desk goes down. Still, I like that the button's backlight turns off after some time, leaving only a black panel. It looks really clean that way. Now, as I said earlier, this desk has two motors, which means that each leg has its own motor. One of the benefits I've noticed is that there is no rod that goes through the desk that way. In the case of a single motor desk, you need a rod that makes both legs move up at the same time. These motors also have a nice Bezier kind of curve in the way they accelerate. I think that's a nice touch as it both starts and stops smoothly. And even with that, it manages to switch between sitting and standing pretty fast. In terms of noise, the desk is super quiet. I was a bit worried since it had two motors, but it's even quieter than my single motor standing desk. I think that's because the motors are somewhat sealed in the legs, which reduces a lot of the noise that's coming out. And here's a little sound comparison. Having the motors inside the legs also helps with how the desk frame looks. I think it looks super clean since there is no motors nor power supplies on site. That's also partly due to the cable management rack that's built into the frame. I like that they included that. The PSU is taking most of the space so it probably won't be enough to hide all your cables but it will at least hide the ones that are added by the standing desk itself. Another thing that surprised me was that the legs have three sections. On cheaper sit-stand desks, there's generally only two sections and one that's actually moving. With this one, you get three sections, two of which that move. The benefits are that the desk can go lower and there's a greater range of height too. I fear that it would wobble a bit more with the added moving parts, the geek desk we have at work wobbles a bit more compared to my other two-section standing desk. However, this one seemed to be pretty sturdy, on par with my previous standing desk. Even when standing up, it doesn't move much. Now, what you need to know is if you would actually benefit from a sit-stand desk, whether it is this one or another. Is the standing feature the only selling point of a height-adjustable desk? Well, I don't think so. Even myself, I don't use it that often to stand up. However, I love the fact that I can perfectly adjust the height to fit my chair. That way, my elbows can be at a 90 degree angle as they should be. I also like to have multiple presets depending on the chair that I use. As an example, I have a wobble chair that I like to use sometimes, and my desk needs to be much higher for it to be usable. Without a height adjustable desk, this would be quite complicated. It's great too if more than one person uses the desk, everyone can easily adjust the desk's height to their liking that way. It's also useful when you want to clean your floor under your desk, or if you want to do some cable management, giving you more room to work with. So again, even if you're not standing often, there are multiple benefits with legs like these. And I don't think these features would be worth it if the desk was like $1,000, but at such a low price, I think it's worth considering when comparing these to, let's say, the regular version of the IKEA Beacon desk frame. You get something that feels more solid and that's far more versatile. Sure, it's not the same price, but it's only a couple hundreds more. On the other hand, if you look at the motorized version of the Beacon, it will cost you more, but you'll get less features 
and an overall less solid product. Now, to conclude this video, I really enjoy this desk and can highly recommend it. If I was to buy one for myself today, that would probably be my choice. It beats my previous entry desk sit-stand desk in most aspects, apart from the sinking issue, making it my new go-to recommendation for a solid sit-stand desk frame. So hope you guys enjoyed, make sure you liked the video if you did, and if you didn't, just let me know what I should change down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.